Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel where we do painting tutorials. Today we'll be doing a little dramatic watercolor pencils landscape. I'll be only using two colors, one of which is black and the other one is a dark green, I believe it is pine green. And I start by applying them onto a scrap piece of paper and I'll be activating this sort of like normal watercolors to use to build up soft layers onto my painting to get that dramatic vibes from it. And I've just pre-wet my uh, actual painting paper with a spray ball because I didn't know where my big fluffy brush was. Feel free to use a proper wash brush instead. And then I'm gonna use a normal uh, watercolor Da Vinci round brush. I believe it's number six. And I'm using this specific one because the bristles are a bit stiffer since it is synthetic. And that allows me to get more pigment out of those blotches of watercolor pencils from the scrap piece of paper. If I were to use a softer brush, then that would dilute the colors because it tends to hold a lot of water. So yeah, use a smaller synthetic brush if you can. I mostly ap apply the mix of green and black on the outer edges of my paper. And while it's wet, I do a uh, middle section that's gonna be like some very distant foliage, some misty forest, something of the sorts. And then I'm going to take more of that black and green with a bit more of the black in it. And I'm going to build up on the edges of my painting, gradually darkening them up. I believe I'm gonna do about three to four layers of this just to get it very nice and saturated. I apply the color to the edges and then with a clean wet brush, I dilute, I blend and words towards the painting. Once everything has fully dried, I actually did use a hair dryer for this because yeah, it was the afternoon and I was in a hurry not to miss out on the sunlight because I didn't want to bring out my soft boxes. So I just used a hair dryer and with a very faint mix and by faint, I mean dilute with a good amount of water. I paint a large tree in the distance that is barely visible slightly towards the left side of the painting. Then a little slope of land in front of it but i'm gonna paint over it in just a bit to darken up because i want each subject that is closer to us to be slightly darker than the one that's further from it so everything is going to get gradually darker as it comes towards us then i darken the edges one more time to darken it up I use more black into my mixture and a bit less water. That's how you get nice vibrant results. And with this slightly darker mixture, I start painting some trees on the right side of my painting. Just do some random lines uh, for the tree trunks. No need to make them perfectly straight or all symmetrical. You don't need any of that. You can make some crooked trees. You can make them split how many times you want. And then I'm just adding some small branches popping out of them. Again, you can add as many or as few as you want. It's completely optional. And if drawing is not your thing, there is going to be a traceable available over at my Patreon page, Sunshine Arts, where we also do full-time painting tutorials and digital downloads of my paintings. If any of that interests you, links are gonna be down in the description and also at the end of this video. Now I'm gonna add one more tree for this layer right here. I tried to make them all like slanted, not perfectly straight, but like to different directions. Like the first one is leaning towards the left and the middle one is plank and the right one is leaning towards the right side. I just like diversity when I'm painting my trees. Then I do a little piece of land beneath them with the same color I used uh, for the trees, I want all to be like on the same layer, so I'm using the same mixture for them. And like I said, I'm gonna darken up the slope on the left side, then I lightly dilute it, uh, that mixture with a bit of water to get a fainter tone, and I go over that first tree I did just to get a bit more definition. Then with the same mixture, I roughly add in some uh, reflections onto the lake. Basically, I'm just painting everything think I've already painted but in a mirror image. And so first I do a very faint reflection for a tree on the left side. Then with a slightly darker mixture I paint the reflections of the trees on the right side because those are closer to us. Then the slopes of land they are like coming onto the lake. And once everything has dried I paint one more layer with a very very dark mixture that is mostly black with just a smidge of green. I'm gonna do one more tree on the right side. 
with a little piece of land beneath it and then of course its little reflection. I like to go with a wet brush over the reflections to make them smudge so they don't look 100% symmetrical. You get some of the warm waves that corrupt the reflection. It's not 100% accurate. I don't know, I just prefer the way this technique looks. Then with the tip of my brush, I do some random pond grass that's like coming out of the water, like two random blobs and goes in all directions. Randomness is key to whatever you're painting nature. If you're gonna take one thing from this video, make it that randomness. That's that's like the missing piece. Now, because I did not preserve the white of my painting, because it would have been a bit too difficult to cut out perfect uh, pieces of tape, they're the shape of ducks, I'm just gonna take a white pen and clean up some of the shapes. Do like two ovals with a slayer shape coming out of them. They're gonna be like, I don't know, swans or geese or whatever. Then I add their shadows underneath them with that green-black mixture. The bell shells are under their necks, using mostly black for the beaks. Then I add some highlights with the white right beneath the pieces of land and a bit over those grass blades. And lastly, I thought I'd darken up that final tree on the right side. I did just add an extra layer to make it extra dark. If you struggle with getting very deep, dark, rich tones with your colors, then layering is key. You're gonna get a darker shade, a more saturated, more vibrant shade with each new layer you add to it, which was my case. I just went with the same exact mixture a second time over the first layer and voila, you can see it got much better and much darker. And then I just peel off the tape slowly in the opposite direction to avoid ripping my pink. I like to give a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters for the month of April and thank you all for watching. We'll see each other in the next video. Bye bye!